Okay, today we're going to talk about how to run pester tests on a SQL database. So this might be if you're, you've made some database changes or you need to check something about your database on a, a fairly regular basis and you can write it in the form of a pester unit test and then run that using PowerShell. So to start off, I've just got a single database here called TechSnips, a single table in that database and a single column in that table. And if we just select that, we see first, second, and third row. If you're a DBA laughing at this database right now, that's fine. This is just for demo purposes. So let's cut over to our PowerShell. Okay, so to start off, we've got our SQL server name and our database name written into variables. The state of SQL PowerShell is really weird. There are two modules that Microsoft has for it. One is the PS SQL module and the other one is the SQL Server module. A PS SQL is being deprecated. It's out of date. It doesn't have all the commandlets you would need to run any of this. Uh, if you're doing SQL PowerShell, you probably want to use the SQL Server module. That being said, one that's loaded in when you install SQL Server is the outdated PS SQL module. And if you have a legacy application that's still using that, you might have to support it. So to kind of get around that, I'm going to bypass that entirely by just going directly to the SQL Server assemblies. And you can download these from Microsoft. Just search for SQL Management Objects 2017 or whichever version of SQL you're using. But once those are installed, I can run the command on line 6. And that will give me object type that I can then create for my SQL Server and start manipulating that. So. What I'm doing on line 9 is actually creating a new SQL management object for my current SQL Express installation and then just looking at the databases. The line 12, we're filtering the database to just the TechSnips database. And then if I scroll down a little bit here, lines 15 and 16 are just looking for the, the table name and the name of the first column. And then in our pester tests, we see that we're really just running an invoke SQL command and passing in those names to a query we defined earlier. So in this case, it's select the top item from the first column from the table. And we saw earlier it should be the first row. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that when you return these, it's going to be in the form of a PowerShell object. For this case, if since I'm doing string matching, I'm using the item array method to cast that as an array before running my pester test on it. So that way I don't have to worry about the string not matching the array object type. And then we have two other tests, one for finding the table name and one for finding the column name. So let's run this. All right, great. Looks like everything checks out. And if we go ahead and select just the, uh, the tables object here, and pipe that into a get member. We can see plenty of other things we can test for and do here. This is a simple example just to get you guys started. All right, thanks for watching and have a good one.